Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we are going to be talking about calorimeter and we are going to connect the concept of calorimeter with enthalpy. We have been talking about enthalpy for quite some videos. In calorimeter, the concept calorie means calories, which we all know means energy. And when we talk about meter, we are going to measure something. In a calorie meter, the heat change is measured. So we are measuring the heat change. The heat change is measured using the change in temperature. So we measure change in temperature and we obviously connect enthalpy using it. Imagine an insulating styrofoam cup. What happens is that we are going to add some acid in it. Let's say we are adding 25.0 centimeter cube of 0 0.0100 mole per decimeter cube HCl. We have the acid here. Now I'm going to add 25.0 centimeter cube of 0 0.0100 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide. If I follow the temperature using a thermometer, I'm going to expect some change here. So I have a thermometer here. The initial temperature was apparently 28 degree. And as the alkali was added, the temperature increased. The final temperature was recorded to be 36.5 degrees hypothetically. Now using this data, we know that the reaction was going on between the H plus ions from HCl and OH minus ions from the alkali. As the reaction proceeded, water was formed, it was a neutralization reaction. The aqueous protons reacted with the aqueous hydroxide to make liquid water. The reaction was exothermic, that is why heat was released and the temperature was increased because obviously the water started warming up. And it is the water we are concerned with here. When we talk about enthalpy, Let's recall the definition for delta H neutralization. The definition obviously starts with the phrase change in energy because obviously each enthalpy is a kind of change in energy. The change in energy when one mole water is made by H plus and OH minus ions. If we have the symbol for standard conditions on delta H, we can add also that this whole thing is happening at standard conditions. Moving on, using the definition, we need to be talking about two values. How much heat was released and how many moles was responsible for this heat change. So the question is how much heat is released? The formula for heat we can use is heat is equals to mass times specific heat times change in temperature. M is equals to the mass of water because it is the water which is warming up. We have how much water? So this water is basically 50 centimeter cube here because the acid and the alkali had water in them and obviously the total volume becomes 50. The specific heat capacity of water is a constant value. Specific heat capacity is basically the heat which is required to warm up the water. Change in temperature is basically how much temperature is increased here. So delta H, delta T is basically change in temperature. Let's start calculating this heat value. K 
Q is equals to M C delta T. When we talk about the mass of water, the mass of water is basically the volume of water because in water's case, volume and mass is same. The volume of water was 25 centimeter cube acid and 25 centimeter cube alkali to give 50 centimeter cube, which is basically 50 grams. So remember, it is the water which is being heated up. So use the entire mass of water. For water, basically, volume and mass are literally the same. The centimeter cube and gram are connected by 1 is to 1 ratio because the density of water the density of water is equals to 1 gram per centimeter cube. So don't just consider the mass of HCl or the mass of NaOH or something like that. Consider the entire water here. When you consider the entire volume of water, you get 50 grams of water here. So 50 grams water times the specific heat capacity, which is 4.18 for pure water. And the change in temperature is final temperature minus initial, which is 36.5 minus 28 degrees. So let me write it over here. 36.5 minus 28 degree. When you calculate that, you get the entire value to be 1776.5 joules. This is the heat that has been released into that container containing water, which was previously obviously acid and alkali. Now we have to talk about how many moles were used. To calculate the moles, basically, we have the formula concentration times volume divided by 1000. The concentration was 0 0.0100 mole per decimeter cube. The volume was 25 centimeter cube and 1000 is a mathematical constant here. The moles we get here is 0 0.00025. We can write a 2.5 zero exponent minus 4. Now basically, we have the mole of the acid and the heat that has been released. You might ask that what about the OH? H plus moles and OH minus moles are related in a 1 is to 1 ratio. So we use only one of these because basically both are same here. So whether you use acid or alkali, that's the same, but don't use both. Now the enthalpy is equals to, enthalpy of neutralization is equals to the heat released divided by mole because you're concerned with one mole value, right? So you're releasing 1776.5 joules using that 2.50 exponent minus 4 moles. How much heat would have been released for one mole? You just divide it and you get the answer. My case, the answer is going to be really huge. Let me let, let me calculate that. It is it is omg oh, seven something one zero six zero 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 joules, and that is joules per mole. We always quote the answer in kilojoule per mole, so it's going to be seven thousand one hundred and six kJ per mole. It's a pretty big answer, but obviously we were using hypothetical values, right? Now moving on to the sources of error in a calorie meter. The first error is going to be heat loss. Because you are using a calorie meter in an open environment, the heat lost to the walls of the container, you can say, or the basically environment around it. So walls of container or the surrounding the heat is lost, that is why maybe your value would be smaller than the actual value. <laughs> but my value is pretty huge. You can add double insulation layer around the styrofoam cup. So you can add double insulation layers or you can add insulation lid, add insulating lid on top to make sure the heat losses are minimum. The second source of error that normally occurs is stirring. So you make sure that you are doing a constant and uniform stirring because the water has to be warmed up uniformly for you to make the assumption that water is the main mass here. So that is why constant and uniform stirring is recommended. 
Moving on, the third source of error could be very small temperature changes. If you were using a very dilute acid, the temperature change won't be very big. So you make sure the temperature changes, it has to be bigger because if temperature change is small, the error percentage would be really huge. So you make sure that you are using more concentrated acid and alkali. That is why more heat would be released, more temperature change would be seen, and ultimately you can expect smaller percentage errors. The last source of error is going to be initial temperature changes. So you make sure that you measure the initial temperature every time you perform this experiment. So you have to make sure that initial temperature which is Ti and obviously Tf has to be recorded properly for all experiments done on the calorimeter. This is overall idea of the calorimeter. This is the glass calorimeter by the way. I hope this idea is clear for us. In the next video we'll be doing some past papers. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.